Welcome back to The Mandalorian. Last week's episode was slightly disappointing. It was still good, but I'm hoping for just a little bit more on this one. If we don't burn to a crisp. It's a pleasant thought. Well, I'm getting uh, like mad Revenge of the Sith vibes from this. Baby Yoda, you better not. Yeah, this isn't looking great. <laughs> okay. Could have gone worse. I always speak too soon. All right then. Chapter eleven: The Heiress. Oh, that's cool. They like refashioned um, an Imperial Walker. Oh. Reunited, and it feels so good. It's just like there were more, but. <laughs> Get you something to eat. I'm not gonna be hungry after you ate so many of the eggs. Ooh, it's the wrestler. <laughs> so what's her deal? Is she a, a Mandalorian? A Jedi? Someone completely unrelated to that? Tasty. <laughs> it's kind of what you get. A little bit of karma after last week. Oh, Baby Yoda, is this your first boat ride? So sweet. You ever see a Mama Cor eat? Quite a sight. I don't know what that is. What is this thing gonna be? Whoa, what the fuck? Hello? Best car is ours. <laughs> oh, they just want the best car, of course. Well. You're all dead now. I don't know what to tell you. Oh, fuck. Is this who I think it is? Because the armor looks right. Please tell me this is Bo Katan. Please. Fuck it up, Mandalorian. Alright. Oh, sweet little baby. I was hoping that. Oh shit, it actually is Bo Katan. Oh, so you were a Mandalorian. There's only one way. The way of the Mandalore. Well I don't think that's how she sees it. Oh come on, dude, you just found them and you're just gonna take off. Sick. <laughs> that was badass. I'm gonna kill your pet. Shouldn't have said that. Oh, what's up, guys? I did. What you gonna do now? Oh shit! That planet is cursed. Anyone who goes there dies. Well, once the Empire knew that's they could control it, true. they made sure no one else could either. Time to fuck up some stormtroopers. Oh shit. <laughs> Don't think that's gonna help you. Damn, she is so badass. Mando, you're looking kinda kinda bad next to these guys. They're outdoing you. Jesus, they took out like 15 people. <laughs> Man, these stormtroopers just got nothing on the Mandalorians. We need to hold them off until we can make the jump to hyperspace. See how well that goes for you. And you guys are stupid just standing right in the center of the room. Take some cover. <laughs> close those doors. Just, just close the doors. Idiots. If you want my help finding the Jedi, you will help me take this ship. I mean, changing the terms. You already got this far, Mando. Just go with it. I mean, Bo Katan has never been like a true, like, selfless hero or anything. She's definitely... I wouldn't consider her a villain, but a definite anti-hero. Oh, you able to shit! No. Long live the Empire. <laughs> Damn. Gotta go, gotta go. Mando, do something crazy. Some whistling birds. Some flamethrower. That works too. Cover me. 
It's over, dude. What? Oh, is she looking for the dark saber? Yeah. If you're asking, you already know. Close one. Well, that just sucks for you then. Oh, damn. We have to go. That's an interesting version of a cyanide pill. Clear the atmosphere. There you will find Ahsoka Tano. <gasps> you were sent by bo -Katan. Oh, fuck! And thank you. This is the way. So sick. Does that mean we're gonna see Sabine Wren with Ahsoka Tano also? Because I remember them, like, leaving together, didn't they? Cool. Aww. I gave you a thousand credits. This was the best you could do. I mean, it was pretty destroyed, <laughs> too. Yeah, I'm not sure this was worth a thousand credits. Uh, hello. Uh, Mando? <laughs> oh, it was another Bryce Dallas Howard episode? I like this one a lot more than uh, the episode she directed in the first season. I thought this episode was actually very good. So yeah, even though this episode was pretty short, uh, big fan of it because it definitely pushed the main storyline forward in a couple pretty big ways. We got to meet Bo-Katan, which honestly I never thought would happen in live action and it was pretty fucking sweet. I think um, the person they casted actually fit the role really well. And they made it clear that she's after the Darksaber again, which makes sense since she did wield it for a while. So I would expect to see her again uh, trying to take down Moff Gideon at some point during the season. Hopefully we get to see Moff Gideon actually use the Darksaber in like a real fight. I want to see, you know, what he's capable of. I think that would be really cool. And she also told uh, Mando where he needs to go to find the Jedi. He needs to find Ahsoka Tano. Ugh, so fucking cool. I mean, out of all the characters from the animated series, Ahsoka is definitely my favorite. Like, she was so fucking cool. I love that she was just about the most true to a gray Jedi you could be. Not 100% with the light, not 100% with the dark, not always following the council's will. I mean, she even left the council after they kind of proved to her that they're very flawed. And she did a few fairly questionable things during the shows where you can't 100% consider her like a light wielding Jedi. So I am so excited to see her show up. I'm hoping it's in the next episode, but I have a feeling they're either gonna give us another um, standalone episode in between that moment or maybe even later uh, because finding her is going to prove to be a bit difficult either way just hearing her name actually said got me pumped i was like oh fuck <laughs> and even though we've already seen the dark saber the fact that she's about to be coming into the show means we're more than likely going to see a classic lightsaber once more and it's been a little while so i'm excited the action in this episode was very good uh, there were quite a few um, pretty sweet action scenes having to do with the mandalorians it was honestly a little frustrating seeing mando get completely outdone by bo katan like every second of the way except for his you know shining moment when he kind of saves the day but based off of the things that she did in the animated series it makes sense like she is a force to be reckoned with her and the rest of death watch and it was, of course, very nice to see Moff Gideon again, even if it was just a hologram for the time being. Um, I'm glad we're not going to have to wait like the whole season to see him again. It was really cool seeing him tell the captain or admiral or whatever to crash the ship. He's like, eh, well, can't let them get the ship, so sucks to be you, but time to die. Like, Giancarlo Esposito makes such a good villain in the things that he does so i feel like it was a very good choice to bring him in on the show and the slight little side story of baby yoda uh bonding with the two frog people as their offspring start to grow was actually kind of cute I suppose it does make you realize he didn't even think about the fact that they were you know somebody's eggs and once he saw like the little baby frog tadpole he started to get attached which was it was very sweet I'm still upset that he ate so many eggs during the last episode, but 
It was an adorable little moment. Cinematography in this episode was very good. I like all the really centered shots where they show um, Bo-Katan and her team like dead center of the screen as they're just like walking towards camera. It really created a, a good sense of power and creating this really imposing uh, figure that these people have. Because they took down that ship pretty easily. Like they ran into a slight problem when they tried to kamikaze it, but none of the troopers stood even remotely a chance against them. Music was also awesome in this episode. Um, I really liked the mixture of electronic and classic orchestral sounds uh, that are typical of Star Wars. It gives the show its own unique sound while also staying true to the original Star Wars. For acting, I'm gonna give it to Katie Shackoff because I think she actually played Bo-Katan very well. It was slightly different from the character in the animated show, but not so much that it was really jarring or anything. And I think she captured the, the righteousness and almost off-putting desire for power and returning to what she believes is rightfully hers. Kind of weirdly reminds me of uh, Daenerys from Game of Thrones a little bit, where at her core she seems like a very good person, but sometimes the things she does and the things she says make you a little worried about what she's going to be willing to do to get what she wants. So I sincerely hope that's not the last time we see Bo-Katan in this season. I would guess that we'll see her at least one or two more times, but if not, I'm pretty satisfied with what we got. Editing and pacing of this episode was actually very fast paced. We got through a lot of information and things within a pretty short amount of time. Mando met up with the Mandalorians that he was looking for. We got to know what Bo-Katan is doing, like what her purpose on the show is, trying to get back the Darksaber. He found out about Ahsoka Tano, got the next destination in mind, and he got his ship mostly fixed up so he can actually get to his next destination. So yeah, there was a lot that happened in this episode. It makes me kind of wish that they had just combined last week's episode with this one, so it would have been a full hour and we got both the buildup and the payoff at the same time. But either way, I am satisfied with this week for sure. Overall, I'd give it a 9.2 out of 10. It delivered almost exactly what I wanted and gave me a lot to look forward to uh, with next week's episode. So fingers crossed that Ahsoka Tano shows up next week and not uh, like two or three weeks down the line. And that is about it. Visual effects are so good. Oh, that's sick. Pretty badass. God, oh, classic Star Wars trench run. 